Hi guys, it's Kelly here and I'm back with another video. Today's video is part of the new uh, Hero Arts spring catalog blog hop. So I'm using the Wonderful Day bundle and then the kind of star of today's show is this Secret Garden fancy die. Um, so we're going to make three cards using this die. There's lots of information to give you <laughs> on this hop. Um, but before we do that, let me tell you what we're doing with the card. So for the first um, background that I'm going to do, I'm using the Hero Hues Reactive Inks. These inks do react with water. I'm going to be doing some just a kind of pastel rainbow ink blend. And then we'll be doing some other little things on top of it as I normally do. Um, so when I do a rainbow, I like a pink versus a red. That's just me. Uh, but you could obviously supplement um, the, I think it's, what is it for the red? Fruit Punch? I think it's Fruit Punch in the reactive inks. Um, but I'm using my blender brushes, and then I like to go back and forth between the two, so I'll put my pink down, then the orange, I'll go back to the pink to make sure I'm happy with that blend, and then move on to the yellow. So, this blog hop, super exciting. Uh, the Hero Arts Spring Catalog has always been my favorite time of year <laughs> because even like before I did this for a living, um, I told you guys I used to shop twice a year, right? I'd save up my crafty dollars. So when the spring catalog hit, because the majority of what I uh, purchased and owned uh, and used in my crafts was Hero Arts, this was like the best thing ever because it was an, all their florals came out. Um, and this catalog does not disappoint. It's got wonderful products in it um, for like the upcoming, you know, spring, summer seasons. So um, with that said, they are, there's a blog hop going on. If you're watching on YouTube, I will link that below. And they're doing two $50 gift card giveaways that is open until February 26th. And then that winner will be announced on the Hero Arts blog. Um, so make sure you hop over there if you're watching on YouTube so you have a chance to win. The other thing that is going on um, with the release of this catalog is the we have a new stamp along. So it is the um, spring 2023 stamp along, which is, if you're not familiar, it's a virtual class. It's all weekend long. This one in particular is the weekend of April 14th, 15th, and 16th. Uh, there's 10 instructors, including myself. I'm so excited to be teaching, um, not just with products that I love, but also with people who are amazing. So of the 10 instructors, there's so many talented people um, that I am blessed to call my friends. Um, um, so I would encourage you to check that out before March 15th. You can buy them after March 15th, but there's early bird pricing uh, at $45 for the class. Um, and it's, you make at least 10 projects. Um, but that, that is just for the class. That's not physical product. They also have additional bundles that you can buy to get everything that you will use in the weekend. But the early bird pricing is until March 15th at $45. After that, it goes up to $50. Um, so save yourself five bucks if you think that you're going to be interested. Also, if something like pops up and you aren't able to be present in the um, actual virtual retreat, there's a replay that you can catch as well. I will link that below if you're interested in picking up that class. Um, I'm super excited to teach in it. So here now all the ink blending is done. Because these are reactive inks um, that work with water, I am spattering on just some clean water. I let that sit for a few seconds and then I blotted it up. That's going to give me some fun little speckles in the background. And then um, I'm also going to use the Hero Arts. This is the white it's the white shimmer spray. Let me double check. Let me just, you hear me knocking over stuff. White iridescent shimmer spray. Um, and so now that it is dry, you do want to wait until it's dry. I am going to do my die cutting out of my rainbow background and then also out of a piece of white cardstock. Um, and these are going to be the backgrounds that we're creating for our cards. 
when I have a large cover plate like this, I like to just put a piece of tape at the top and bottom or each side and then just kind of wrap it around. Yes, the die will cut through the tape on the background, um, but for the most part, I haven't had any issue getting it off. And then if I do um, have any issues, like I I've adhered it down and nobody can see it anyway because it's on the back. The nice thing about this particular die is it cuts out that piece in the center. See how that piece is missing? So you can either use them together or separate. So you can use it as a frame or you can use it as a full background cover plate, which I am totally here for. I like getting more bang for my buck. All you're seeing me do here is go through just with my tweezers and poke out any of the um, little tinier like flower centers so that um, they're you know, they're all out. Sometimes those littler ones can be a little bit tricky. And then this is the centerpiece. I can pop this back in if I am interested in it, or I can leave it out, which in our case, since we're making three cards, I am going to leave it out. So here's both die cuts complete out of the white and out of the um, rainbow. And for my third card, I'm going to remove the section out of the rainbow and use the rainbow one as a frame and then as a separate piece for a focal point. For the focal point for my other card is where this wonderful day stamp set comes in. So I'm going to stamp this down in um, alcohol safe ink. This is the intense black from Hero Art, which is like my go-to. Uh, and I'm going to stamp this down and then I'm going to move on to do some Copic coloring. Normally when you guys see me do Copic coloring, I'm using, you know, four colors for each thing because I like my cards to match when they're all in a video together. I am just using these colors and I am going to shade the individual parts of the flower with another color. I'm not going to have, you know, two yellows, two reds, two, like I'm not going to do all of that. We're going to shade it all together. So um, here I am going in and I'm adding in my shadows with this as an R32. It's more of a peachy, peachy red, I guess I would call it. Um, it matched the ink blending. That's how I picked my colors. I looked at the ink blending and then I picked colors that would go accordingly. Um, and so when you're laying down your shadows, you want to make sure that you're adding shadows any point where to... Um, points meet or where one lays on top of the other. So with these petals, you know, each petal, like one's on top, one's tucked underneath. And then the same thing with these uh, three petals that are facing us, they're kind of curled up and over. Those would all have shadows where they're curling up. And then I blended that out with my YRO2, which is an orange, um, again, more on the peachy side. And then I'm just going to add in a little bit of yellow for kind of some brightness and just some color variation. And then I will do the same thing on the outside petals. In order to shade my inside, I did go back in with my orange and just add a little bit, blend that back out with my yellow, just so it didn't look as flat. But because Copics are transparent, they're buildable. So if you are finding that you're not getting enough of a shadow, you can just go in with the same color and do another layer and it will add more um, depth to your coloring. So um, the last time, well, you know, let's, we're not going to talk about the last time. We, maybe we will. We'll have to see how much time we have. Um, but I want to talk about the, the teaching and the catalog because this is kind of a big deal for me. Um, not, the, I love teaching. I always have. And my game plan is at some point to, you know, do classes. I have some things in the works, um, in like in the background, uh, just because they're not ready for public viewing yet, but I am working on them. Um, but I do enjoy the teaching portion. I especially enjoy these because they are live. It is a little trickier to pull off as a small business person doing a teachable live, though I am hoping to do them in the future. Um, but to be able to be part of this um, with all of these wonderful people, I just, I'm very grateful for the opportunity uh, to teach alongside some of the most wonderful create, like I love everybody 
everybody's style in this class. I am here for. <laughs> um, so for my smaller flowers, I decided to add, bring in a little bit of that purple and then I blended it out again with that same R32, uh, just color variation. You guys know how I roll. Uh, if you watch my channel, big fan of the color mixing. So I did both of the small flowers the same way. Um, and then we're going to move on to the leaves. For the leaves, I did them two different colors. Because <laughs> Let me say it for you one more time. In case you didn't know, I like a lot of color variation. I like when my bouquets look interesting. Um, and so for the bigger, rounder leaves, I am doing a yellow-green. So I'll put my shadows down with my yellow-green. And then I'm going to blend those out with, an, with my actual yellow. And they work really nicely together. If you've never seen one of these videos where I use multiple color families, the point, the part that you need to look at with Copics um, when you're blending color families is the last number. The last number is the most important number, and it's going to tell you um, whether or not they'll blend together. So you want to get things that are relatively close to each other. So almost all of my colors end in two. There's two exceptions to that. I'm using a YG03, which is right next to the two, so that's totally okay. And then the other one I'm using is a BG45. So the five is a little bit far away from the two, but because of the way that this particular family is numbered, it still works really well. So I used a B02, a BG45, and a YG03. The three and the five aren't quite as far apart from each other, uh, but they all worked really nicely together. And this is what I use to color the rest of these longer leaves. So these cards that you are seeing um, are actually in the Hero Arts catalog, which is another thing that is super cool for me. Because remember, starting out as a card maker, Hero Arts was like, my be all end all. That is where I wanted to be. I wanted to be on the Hero Arts team. I wanted to work for them. I loved their product and nothing has changed. However, many, what, thir 13 years later, nothing has changed. Still a huge fan, still love their product. Um, and so it was so interesting to be on the other side of the like creating for the catalog because I actually made these cards in December and then, um, like I made them, I videoed them, the whole thing, took the photos, and then I had to package them up and mail them in. But because I have no idea what I'm doing, like I, you know, guys, I'm out here just on a wing and a prayer like everybody else. Um, well, I packaged them up. I went to go mail them. The first place I went to go mail them to um, said that they were a regular FedEx, but they weren't actually a regular FedEx. So then I ended up having to go to um, like the regular uh, postal service. Here, I've just die cut this out with its coordinating bundle. And then I'm going to move on to heat embossing my sentiments. I am using the pitch black cardstock and then a white detail embossing powder. Um, so I went, I had to go to the post office to mail my things, uh, and then it turns out that the address that I mailed them to was the wrong address. Yep, that happened. So they went all the way, I live in Ohio, they went all the way out to California to Hero Arts, and then because they couldn't, it was a good address, but the forward on the address wasn't good anymore. So they sent them back to me in Ohio, and then I had to mail them out there again to the correct address with some assistance from Libby, who is amazing. Um, and so I finally got them out there, and then they they do like all the layouts and the photographing themselves for the catalog. Just a really cool experience to kind of be on the other side of it. Um, and then they very generously mailed me a catalog um, so that I could see my own cards in the catalog. Very cool. Just like the whole thing was super cool. So when I, in my previous um, marriage, this is probably, I don't think I've ever shared this before, probably because it's like a little bit personal, but it is what it is. Um, so in my previous marriage, my ex-husband and I used to fight um, all the time when we first got married about money. We fought all the time about money. And I mean, we fought about the dishes and other stuff too. I think when you're like, we didn't live together before we got married. Um, 
So I think it's pretty common that when you first move in together, you guys are fighting about everything. And so we ended up coming to a compromise um, in regards to a lot of things so that, you know, we were married for almost 10 years. So we we worked it out. But one of the things um, that was always kind of a struggle for me was the money portion. And um, so I worked two jobs at the time, but I had an allowance and a $25 allowance per paycheck. And so that was what I saved up. And I saved up that money to buy my craft supplies. And I, it's not that way anymore. That's that's not how I do it um, because that didn't work for me. Um, but let's go back to the cards. So here I originally stamped and heat embossed sentiments for all of the cards, but I didn't end up loving it. So I ended up setting that one aside and then um, I'm going to go back in and just stamp them onto my cardstock. And I liked that much better. I liked um, that it looked more delicate. But for this card, because I've got all this white texture going on in the background, which I totally love, um, probably my favorite way to use a die is for texture in the background. Um, but I'm going to glue this down with the white on white, and then I am going to use the uh, black uh, embossed. Why couldn't I think of that word? I don't know. I just said it like six times. The embossed sentiment with this because I feel like the bolder focal point allows me for a bolder sentiment. So anyway, I had this allowance and that is what I saved up. And I saved up all my dollars until the catalog release. Whether that was the spring catalog like we are doing here or the fall catalog. Um, and that's how I bought my craft supplies. And like I, I know I've shared that with you guys in the past that like I only shop twice a year, but that's legitimately why because, um, like what no matter what I was purchasing, whether it was craft supplies or a book or, um, you know anything like that, like that I had to save up my money for my allowance. Um, which everybody has a different way of budgeting, and by no means am I judging. But if you are in a situation where that is your situation and you don't like that, um, please don't just let it go. Because then I realized some years later, um, because I didn't want to argue about our finances, I was when I ended up getting divorced, I was very ignorant about our finances, um, which is no way to be no way to be. And so Eric and I are much more of a, um, like our finances are combined, but we are much more, um, uh, everybody knows what, what is going on. So nobody is in the dark. Nobody is the only person who controls all of the bills. So there's, that. that's my little piece of, uh, marriage advice. But if you have somebody who is the only person who does the bills and that works for you, by no means am I judging. I'm just saying it didn't work for me. So here, what I'm doing is I wanted to use the sentiment, but I wanted to make it fit into my frame better. So I used the tape trick. So I originally stamped, like I put the tape down to block friend, and then I stamped or I inked it up. I removed the tape, stamped down, and now I'm cleaning it with the ultra clean. Then I'm going to put in this like scrap piece of cardstock and stamp it down again just to make sure that it is clean so I don't get any like ghost stamping on my rainbow portion. And then um, I will put the front in place where I want it. I will pick it back up with the misty door, put my tape back in place, this time covering the grate portion. I will ink it up again. I will remove my tape. That is that is key. I have stamped it down with the tape before. Remove the tape and then you can stamp your sentiment again and then clean and move on. So here for this one, I went back and forth about whether or not to use the embossed version and I didn't super love it. Um, so I just decided to go with a simpler card and that's okay. There's, there's absolutely nothing wrong with that um, because this gives me the opportunity for zero waste. So the white uh, die cut that was cut out of the other um, frame, like when I cut them out of the frame, which by the way, you can remove this piece. Um, just to, like, you don't have to die cut them together. You can remove it. I chose not to. Um, but here I stack them to give this just a little bit more weight. And then I am going to stamp my sentiment again, just directly onto my cardstock. Um, 
in black because I felt like that looked the nicest. But all of these little rainbow pieces have kind of that like clean spatter, have that sparkle spatter on them, which just make them look more interesting. So this sentiment says, you make me um, so happy. And then it's just a very simple card. It's got this little rainbow focal point. And sometimes I think that that's nice to have. I think it's nice to have as an option. Um, because I like a clean and simple design. Not everybody does. And feel free if it's your style to like throw the kitchen sink at it. But sometimes I like something that's just nice and simple with lots of clean white space. Um, so I adhered that down. And again, it has another layer underneath it. So it is a little bit raised. But then this is it. This is all three cards that we have created using this one die cut. And I'm sure along the hop, you will see many more. Um, so thank you guys so much for joining me. I hope that you will head over and check out the hop and the new catalog. And of course, the stamp along. I hope to see you there. Thank you guys so much for joining me. I appreciate your time and I will catch you on the next video. Bye.